Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are doing a border tutorial using inside circles as well as a few inside ovals. So come join me at the machine and watch how we mark this out and quilt it out. Let's start by getting some perspective on what we have here. What I have here is a border and it happens to be a six inch border but of course you can utilize this design in any size border you have. And I have a corner stone down here at the um, left side. And then here I have my middle registration mark. And then I've also measured and located the very center of the border and put a registration line there. Now, I don't have a complete border. We're going to pretend that this is the center just for the tutorial so that you can see how I work my way one whole distance down to the uh, cornerstone and then back and then what we're going to do with it after that. The tools we're going to be using is a curved ruler, so make sure you grab a curved ruler from your collection of rulers in your stash. Also, I'm going to be using our oval and our circle, either or, typically. We're going to use some different size circles or ovals. You can combine both of them for this particular border treatment. And this is the inside circles. So let's get started. Let's come over here to the middle and we'll start with step one. We have established that this is the center of our border. And what I'm going to do is use my curve. I have actually put a piece of tape underneath, of course, to three quarters of an inch because I want three quarter inch curved arc as I move my way down. So I come to the center. And actually, when I do this design, I tend to like the very first curve from the center out to come under. So it's a smile rather than a frown. So I'm going to turn that. I'm going to line this right up with the corner. Use whatever marking tool you prefer. Slide over. I'll thicken my line for my registration line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move down, but we're going to flip the ruler the other way. Now we're going to slide the ruler right side up. I line this up so that the line is still on that center line. And now I take my curve coming down the opposite way. Then very simply, I turn the ruler, slide down. And again, I make sure that my line is right on the center line. And now I'm going to make the smile and then upside down, make the frown. All the way over to the end, which would be the cornerstone. Now, we have ended right where the cornerstone starts. Again, we're back to the center, and the obvious choice would be to take an oval or a circle and do one right in the center. And I want to be just a little bit more creative. What I'm going to use is one of my curves. I'm going to line that up so the center line of my curve goes right down the center of the border. I took it to a half of an inch, which is going to give me a three-quarter inch crescent with my hopping foot. I locked my stitches. I'm going to come down and on my way down again remember with this particular design I want it to be nice and showy so I'm going to go ahead and thicken my line come down with my arc boom nice thick line now as you can see up close I have one side of the pumpkin seed I'm going to slide my ruler in again that half inch is going to line up perfectly right with the center. I also make sure that that center registration line is on my center chalk line here. Now I'm going to complete the right side of the pumpkin seed. And again, I'm going to keep that line thick so it pops. I'm actually going to do that all the way through this particular border treatment because I want the drama. One of the few times I actually want drama. Okay, there's that. So now we have our lovely pumpkin seed. I'm going to come down and I'm going to start right there. Line that back up, bring it, bring it exactly home where it would have been before. That should keep me right on the line. There we go. Back 
it up just a little ways. And now I'm going to grab our first circle shape. For our first circle, I'm going to use a two and a half finished inside circle. And what we're going to do is I'm going to line up the center registration lines, which are the lines on the ruler that has arrows, with the curved line as I move through the curve. So I'm going to take that, slide it in, snap it in place, and I like to just go ahead and put just a little bit of tape right on the puzzle piece. And now I slide my ruler over and again my center line of the circle ruler lines up right on the line that led into the center and then on the left side this center line as well lines right up on the curve line there. So now I know I'm in place. So now I can start my machine, travel my circle, and I'm going to go ahead and thicken my line as I go. The handle's going to keep that circle nice and stable as I work my way around. Come around, thicken, come around, thicken, come around, thicken, come around, and coming up, coming up, I've met there. Now I can actually work my way all the way back to the new beginning space. The new beginning space is always going to be on the opposite side from where I started. So now the new beginning space is there. I reline up my circle ruler. I have the arrow perfectly matched there. And then I have the next opposite arrow perfectly lined up on the upswing of the curve. So now I line that up, travel my stitching, come around, Now as I move my way across this particular border, I could either keep the same circle size, but I think we're going to mix it up a little bit and we're going to go from these nice uh, medium large inside circles to something a lot smaller. I come up, I meet, I thicken my line, I come back around to my new start spot, spot stop my machine and I can either continue on with this size or I could grab the next size down. Our next size that I've changed to is actually an oval, one of the inside ovals. And what I've done is I've lined up just like I did the circle with that center line here and then line that up. Now that means that that oval is going to be at the angle, but that's what I want to give that wonderful curvature to the border design. So now I'm going to lock my stitches. Continue around, come up, back, again just gently rest it right against the inside curvature of that circle. And what's nice about the inside circles with the puzzle piece is that when you come around there you don't get a bump or a divot. It's nice and smooth, so it goes right around and it looks like a nice smooth oval as I complete it. Back forth. And again, remember, once you reach the starting side, you travel back around to the opposite side because that's going to be your new starting side. Now, I'm only going to put an oval in between each of the size changes of the circle. So now we will add the next size down of the circles and continue across the border. We've now dropped down to two inch, grab a hold of my ruler, line up my center, line up my center, right on the curve. Make sure that's right. The nice thing about planning these designs on paper in the evening in front of the TV is there's no fear of an oops. We know that we can complete these and not have any issues. And as long as you follow those basic ruler rules, excuse me, not rulers, rules and rulers, 
you're gonna end up perfect. Now I'm here at the end and now I'm gonna go all the way back around to here, lock my stitches, slide my ruler, make sure that I reline up that center because the curvature now, the arc is coming down. Got that lined up, continue on. Now we're down to a one and a half inch finish circle. Come around, I've lined everything up just as we have the previous circles and ovals. And I'm gonna just go around and around and around and there. Slide my ruler, line up the center, line up the center. The one thing I want everyone to remember, obviously, is that whenever you're doing ruler work, it's not a race. It's a nice, steady process. Rushing only frustrates you, and it causes you to have to rip out, and none of us want to rip out. It's so much more fun to quilt than to unquilt. So just take your time, and remember that steady wins the race. Now, as you can see, we have this wonderful undulation of larger to smaller circles going down our border. So let's head back to the center, and I want to go over my next step. Okay, so now I am back to the center. So I'm going to reattach the same size circle, and in this case, it was two and a half inch finished, of the inside circles, and work my way across the other end of the border. This is the time that we would do the opposite side of that border. Let me bring myself right back down to the starting point, reline up my ruler, make sure this half and this half line up on the curved line, and I'm going to work my way now over to the right to complete the opposite side. The 
checking that line. Meet. And then re. Slide over to the opposite side, right where the line is, the curvature. Slide my ruler. Glance over. I did two of this specific size. So we will mirror that. Line that, line that, next. We are now back to the center. Here is our center area of the border. And what I want to do is consider a couple different options. Now a few things we could actually do is utilize this center piece as a spine and the cleavage point between every circle as the, the area of origin. And I could actually feather, 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 into small, so three feathers on each one. And then of course down here, I could go feather, feather, feather. Here, I could again go feather, feather, third little feather. And then follow this around once I, once I finish that. And then go ahead and put a center teardrop and then two small up on each side. Now that's option one. You could do one teardrop in between. We could do stuff inside the circle. So obviously here, you've got lots of options. What I'm gonna do right now is we're actually just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put piano keys on both sides of the circles. And then if I choose to add something to the inside, we can do that later. For our piano keys, I'm gonna slide my ditcher over and I'm actually gonna go ahead and pre-mark. I like to pre-mark when I'm doing piano keys because then I don't have to think about it as I go and then I don't end up again with one oops because I wasn't thinking. So I'm gonna line that up. My first piano key is gonna start from the center out and therefore I don't care where it ends on both ends and I don't have to do any sort of math. So I'm gonna line this up. Make sure to keep it square. There's an inch, go down to the circle. Make sure you come down, do the bottom portion too. And then I'm gonna slide a quarter of an inch and also add a quarter of an inch. So we'll have pinstripes, which is going to take this one up another notch to the higher end custom border. Slide over, make sure to square, make sure to line that up. There's that. There's that. Remember the chalk is going to wipe away. Don't worry if you go through. Quarter inch for our pinstripe. And I'm going to do this all the way across. Slide over, make sure it stays square. There's nothing more frustrating when you're looking at a border of a quilt and the piano keys or the 45 degrees start to go off a little bit. You wanna make sure to use this line on the rulers to keep everything square and straight. Makes your work look so much more high quality.
Now we are close to our end. I'm going to put my last little mark in here. Make sure it's nice and even. Now remember, your last mark you definitely want to have parallel to the straight line that you actually have here. So that turned out well. Now we're going to go back to the center and I would work my way from the center back out to the right to mark the other side of my piano keys. And then we're going to start stitching these. I've completed marking my pinstripe piano keys. And so now I'm all the way to the left side of the machine. I'm going to use my ditch ruler and I'm going to pick either the top or the bottom. So I'm going to come down here and go with the bottom down and continue all the way across in the bottom section. Once I finish that part all the way across, then I'll lock my stitches, come back, relock up here, and I'll do the top above the circles. Since I have them marked, I don't have to drag, thread, cross over, down, over, up, lock, drag, lock, up. I can just do it from over across the top and then over across the bottom without breaking thread all the way. So let's get started on that. Well, there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and have a wonderful day and take care of each other and join us back here at Quilters Apothecary for more wonderful tutorials down the road. Bye.